Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's another trying to fix video. Another video where I've bought a faulty item off eBay and I'm going to do my best to repair it. And like I say, in nearly all of these videos don't copy what you see. This particular item I have never taken apart before and I might be making lots of stupid mistakes but I'm going to do my best to try and repair it. Now I think I know what this is, I've ordered two things recently and they both arrived, I'm not too sure which one this is but going by the weight I think that this is going to be a, wait for it, I think it's going to be a clock radio. Yes it is, right okay. Get rid of the bubble wrap. Right, so there we have it. It's a bush one, so this would be a relatively cheap one that you would have picked up from somewhere, somewhere like Argos or somewhere like that. Radio buzzer. So when I was younger, I did actually have something similar. I had one with an actual tape player in it as well, so you could do the tape. Well, apparently now these buttons up here are not working. So let me show you the listing. And then uh, from memory it says something like you can't adjust the time or the alarm because the buttons up here are not working, which obviously means that the thing is kind of useless. So this is a list in here. I paid £3 for it. I know it says £4 there, but it was a, a best offer. So I paid £3 and £3.90 postage, so £6.90 in total. And it says retro vintage 1980s Bush 6130 electric alarm clock radio faulty. Uh, hold on. Yeah, parts, 40 parts, FM, LW, and let's just see what it says down here. Vintage, blah, 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 same again. Radio light and display works, case in good condition. The four left-hand side buttons don't function, so you cannot adjust time or alarm. So let's plug it in, see if that is definitely the case, and then we can take this apart and uh, see if we can fix it. Right, let's plug it in and see what's happening with it. One. Nice loud buzz. Right, let's forget about the tune and everything for a minute. Let's just see what's happening here. Yeah, I mean, when I'm pressing them, there's no click. They've been forced in. If you listen, there's no click. Oh, this one is a little, there's a little bit of give on that one, but there's nothing happening on here. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely not right. So I think what we'll do is, rather than messing around with it, let's just take it off, uh, take, take it apart and see what's happening with the top. Now my first impressions are that I don't think this would have been messed around with. I think out of all the things you can buy on eBay, something like this is going to be a pretty safe buy because essentially it's worthless. So would somebody really go out of their way to take it apart and try to fix it? I reckon they just got it in some sort of job lot or something or it's been up in their attic for ages and then they just, just want rid of it. So my first impressions are that it probably will be fixable purely because I don't think anybody would have looked at this before. Right, I can hear... Okay, quite a lot of rattling inside, which isn't great. Battery for clock memory only. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, nice bit of uh, nice bit of leakage there, isn't it? Look. Yeah, okay. So a battery's leaked nicely there. We'll have to have a little look at that as well. I can see the foam's all discoloured. It really does look old. Well, that screw was really in tightly, so... I don't think that this has been, yeah, I don't think this has been ever opened, which is good for me because it means there's more chance of, more chance of fixing it. Now I've got to be careful when I take this apart because obviously we have 240 volts going straight into it. Of course I've unplugged it and it's dead at the moment, but there might well still be capacitors in there that are, uh, that are storing power. All these bits falling out all over the place. Bits of, uh, I don't know, bits of green. Look at that. Ah, right, that's not a good sign. That does look like some kind of switch or something. I wonder whether the plastic on under those switches has all, has all failed. There's another screw in the middle here. I actually do quite like the look of it if that was cleaned up.
All right, here we go. Right, I don't know where all these green bits are actually coming from. Hopefully it will make sense make sense in a bit. So we're dealing with the ones here. So actually we don't really have to get too involved in it. So where is all those? I can still hear it all rattling inside. But hopefully it will become apparent. Ah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Right, before I even take that off, if you have a look under here, can you see that there's like a green pad there? So I think what's happened is there must be like some plastic pads under here that are going onto the contacts and it looks like all of them have broken. In fact, it looks like something's burnt here or maybe maybe dampness or water got spilt on it. Maybe it might not actually be repairable. Yeah, that does look, does look rusty here. Let's undo those little screws and see what's underneath it. Wow, look at that wire there. <laughs> look at that wire there. It's just hanging on for dear life. It's been, the screw's gone right through it. Wow. Okay, that's gonna need sorting out, look. Can you see, can you see there, there's only a bit left. I reckon that happened at the manufacturers. Yeah, that's not great, is it? That was that middle, I'm thinking, yeah, that's that middle screw there. And it looks like originally there would have been that little cloth that goes underneath the 9 volt battery connector so you can pull it to get the battery out nice and easily. That's long, uh, long since perished. Actually, if the battery, hold on one second, was the battery here? The battery's leaked on it, hasn't it? Yeah, the battery's here. I reckon because of all the corrosion here, the battery's leaked onto, maybe it was stored upside down and the battery poured itself out onto this connector up here. Because these screws are also rusty. Right, the moment of truth, what's gonna happen underneath here? Let's uh, zoom in a bit more. Yeah, there we go. Can you see all those, uh, this would have been rubber originally. I think they would have been like rubber pads to go onto here. It's actually sort of more like turned to plastic now. It's just all gone brittle. Right, well that's not work, that's why it's not working. Is there anything I can do to fix that now? I wonder, I wonder what sort of design, is it just gonna be similar to for example, a, uh, you know, like the membrane on the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox controllers and stuff like that. I wonder whether it's going to be a similar thing to that. So here are the buttons. I don't know whether that's melted in or whether... I mean, that does seem to be plastic. Well, that's what all the rat rattling around was anyway. Oh, there we go. Look, that's the carbon. That's the sort of carbon thing at the bottom there that would have been making the connection, I reckon. There. Yeah, I reckon these must have been some kind of rubber. Let's take them all out. Okay, well, look, I might not necessarily get it working, but it's still kind of interesting just to diagnose what happened. So I think battery leaked, leaked onto here, and then uh, just ate away at the rubber and made it rock hard and bristle. So what I have to do now 
is I've got to find some kind of membrane or something that I can put on there to mimic mimic the presses just to see if it works because this might be a completely different setup I don't know right let me have a search around the house see if I've got anything well I've had a look around and I have got these membranes here from the uh, Mega Joy 2000 this handheld I think it was an NES clone I never actually got it working but this is the thing that keeps on giving I only just recently tried to use the crystal in this for my uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing so uh, although this hasn't worked it's kind of been good because I've been able to harvest spares from it so what I'm wondering is if I just get them and if I press them on here is that going to make the contact do you know what I mean because all it has to do is can you see we've got one lot of pads here if you see like call it to say a trident fork and then we've got the other ones that go here which are joined to all the others so as long as I connect between the the bottom and the top then it's going to make on each of them isn't it I'm just wondering if that's all it takes one of these or not so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully how am I going to do this now because I don't want to let's have a look I don't want to touch this transformer whatsoever because there's 240 volts going into that uh, I suppose I have to do it I suppose I'd have to kind of do it like this so let's try to cover that up a little bit so my hand doesn't accidentally touch it uh, there I'm just going to pop that there as well. Right, okay, hopefully now that will be all right. Right, so I can see the clock just flashing away under here. It'll be very hard to see. Right, I've forgotten which is which, so let's just uh, see what will happen if I just touch one of them this is very hard to do there you go can you see it's moving so it does work look there you go I'm up to four o'clock now five six okay so it looks like these pads are going to work and that's the minute. So I'm not going to mess around with it anymore. I've got to work out a way to cut these pads and stick them onto the bottom here. Uh, yeah, not too sure. That's what I have to work out how to do. Let me have a little think about that. But that's definitely going to work if I can get them all lined up. Well, let me turn this off. Right, so we're unplugged now again. So now I have to think about how am I going to, how am I going to do this. But what I'm thinking is, I'm just going to cut basically this into kind of squares and I'm just going to stick them onto here and then the very fact that the button's on top of it because we're in the moulded plastic, that should be all it's going to take. So in fact I can keep those two perfect, look, those two line up perfectly like that so I'm going to cut it down the middle here and put the other two that side, square them off a bit, I think this is going to do because luckily the buttons are kind of spaced out roughly the same if you have a look here the two ones here are going to be in the middle there and there I think that might well work you know and I might use a bit of hot glue gun or something just to get them down onto it or captain tape I think maybe glue gun might be the uh, I'm gonna get the glue gun I think that might be the best uh, the best job right let me uh, get that heated up all right so I'm thinking about just squaring this off I'll keep it big to begin with straight down the middle I'm thinking that's what would have been there originally something similar to that but ones that maybe I don't know maybe they never fitted into the buttons maybe they've melted into the buttons and then gone rock hard so that's what I'm thinking just like that there, uh, that actually looks quite professional. Look at that. If that works, I think that will look pretty good. I'm just going to neaten up the uh, the blue bits a bit just to make them a bit more in line with each other. But yeah, that looks uh, that looks good. Happy with that. 
So when the glue gun heats itself up, I'm just going to put a little dot here. I'm just going to put a dot at the corners. But before I do that, I'm going to get a cotton bud, a Q-tip, and I'm just going to clean this up with a bit of IPA because it just looks a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit corroded. All right, so this is what I'm using here. Just dip that into it, and let's give that a nice good clean. Yeah, there you go, you can see. Not too bad, actually. I'm certain that the battery did leak onto that. OK, I think that's going to be clean enough. Just going to let that evaporate off, and then we'll use the glue gun to glue it down. Right, so I'm just going to line them up roughly in the middle. Luckily, it's got a cutout, so I'm kind of putting the middle bit in the cutout. You see this middle prong here. Right, OK, that's that bit done. I know it doesn't look as professional now. When it gets a little bit harder, I'll uh, wipe away some of that excess. But, you know, if it works, then it's going uh, to be good, isn't it? But have a look now. You can see there's definitely pressing in. It's got a nice click to them. Right, so before I put it back together, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a quick clean out, just because there's still quite a lot of the residue off the... Uh, the bits of old rubber and stuff like that. So I'm going to give it a clean and clean all these out because you can see that there's a lot of staining around the buttons. So I'm just going to use a wet wipe for that. Just giving that a quick wipe, the battery compartment, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, the battery connector, I'm going to wait until it's all put back together and then I can deal with uh, deal with that bit there. So really now, I'm not going to do any more than that on the inside because it's not particularly dusty. I can do the rest of the cleaning on the outside now. So let's pop these things back in. And we'll screw this back on and we'll see if it's going to uh, make a connection or not. See, those membranes might be a bit too big and maybe now it's just going to force itself to be on all the time. But if that's the case, I can maybe fit a little spacer between the edge here and the screws here to then push them a bit further away. Do you know what I mean? Imagine now if there was a little washer just here on this bit here and the other side, it's going to push it out. So it's going to push this further away, isn't it? So if that doesn't work, it's not this, uh, it's not the end of the world. I still think I will be able to get it to work. Yeah, they feel okay. What I'm doing is I'm not doing them up really, really tight. I'm leaving them just a little bit slack. And I can feel when I press them in now, look, you can see they've got spring to them. I think I'm going to put the cover back on and, uh, yeah, put the cover back on, see how it performs. And then we can give the outside a really, really good clean. I've got, I need to solder that wire on the inside, don't I? You know, the one where the middle screw had gone through. So I need to unsolder that and then cut it back and solder it back onto that point there. And also try to reroute it so the same thing's not going to happen again on this one here. Let's get that sorted. Right, so I've just stripped that wire back now and I'm going to re-solder it onto that point. There we go, that's going to be out of harm's way, isn't it? Right, let's get this thing back together. Right, they feel okay. They don't feel amazing. That one feels a little bit stiff. This one here. But it might be okay. The rest do feel pretty good. So let's see now if this is, uh, see if this is going to work. And then I can give it a good clean. Right, so it's flashing there. Let's turn these lights off. 
There you go, you can see it now. <laughs> right, okay, so, hour. Yeah, fine, that's moving. Minute. Yeah, that's moving. Definitely not as nice as the hour, but it's moving. Let's see if I hold it down, does it go quick? No, it doesn't, does it? No, okay, I presume that's the way it was before. Uh, so that's that. Now, set alarm on and off. Oh, and that's alarm, so you hold that down, and then, there we go. Uh, right, so that's on medium wave. Excellent. So the radio comes on when the alarm goes off. So I presume now if I set it to buzzer back here, that the same thing will happen now with the buzzer. So let's do that again now. Imagine being woken up to that. Wow. Okay, and that's on. There we go. So it is all working. Oh, I, I like that. Do you know what? I know it sounds silly. I would consider actually using that in this day and age. I think it looks all right. Well, I'm going to give that a real good clean up now. Get rid of all the dust and dirt from it. Stick this little thing back down with some double sided sticky tape. And then, although it's still going to be faded, I think it's going to come up pretty good. Oh, I'm well happy with that. I like the way that that's a nice little sort of like touch sensitive thing instead of a clicky clicky button. Right, okay, yeah, let's unplug it and give it a real good clean. Just going to have a quick check in the plug just to make sure it has been wired up properly. But it's got a 13 amp fuse and there's no way that this is going to need a 13 amp fuse, is there? Let's uh, swap that out. This is back in the days where probably you had to wire up things yourself. In fact, if you have a look at the plug, the plug is a uh, ever ready plug. That's showing a bit of age. Right, let's get a, a three amp for that. Let me just see if there is any markings on the back of it. Right, I can't see any power rating on it. But think about it, 240 volts, so that's going to be uh, 680, 720 watts. So a 3 amp uh, fuse is going to do 720 watts, and I can't see how it's possible that that's going to be more than 720 watts. So let's get that swapped out. Right, annoyingly, I can't find any 3 amp fuses, but I've got a 5 amp, so I'm going to use that one, and uh, I'll order some 3 amp up, and then I can swap that, swap that a little bit later. So that 13 amp has probably been in there for the past 20 20 years or more. Maybe 30 years or more. Right, okay, let's continue on with the cleaning. So I've given it a really nice clean up. There's a few scratches and stuff around the place. It actually looks like it's painted plastic. So there is some chips and stuff on it. But overall, I think it looks really nice. For a Bush product, obviously these are cheap products, but uh, yeah, it's got a certain charm about it. Right, let's try out this uh, thing, this battery backup thing. So look, if I said it was two, 203 now, and let's pull the plug, and now plug it back in again it's reset itself to 12 o'clock. So now let's put the battery in. This cleaned up really nice as well, actually. If you have a look at it there. It all looks, uh, it all looks perfectly passable now. Plug that in. Put it in this way, I presume. Oh, it's quite tight. Oh, that way, there you go, yeah, okay. It says there, battery for clock memory only. And what I did is, I haven't got any off this foam, but I just picked off the very bad bits of foam. So now it just looks like it's kind of degraded a bit rather than that uh, a heavy leakage on it. Right, okay, so let's do exactly the same thing now. So let's set it to, I think I accidentally pressed a button. Right, let's set it to 504, pull the plug. And now when I put it back in, there you go, 504. So that does work, let's pull the plug again. I mean, I don't know if it was out for a week or something, would it hold it? 
I bet it would, you know, a 9 volt battery. Well, okay, let's uh, get this set up and then finish off this video. Oh, yeah. What a lovely way to be woken up to. I can't think of a better sound that I would rather hear first thing in the morning after only getting five hours sleep than that amazing humming noise. But, apart from the humming noise, it is actually working okay. And, do you know what? I quite like the look of it. Look at that. Lights up nicely there. Sounds okay. Of Ireland, right? a bit of volume to it. And I really like that bit there. What a lovely fix. £6.90, is it worth any more than that? I'm not too sure. Probably not. But it's still a device with a fair bit of charm. And, as far as a fix-it video is concerned, I think a fair bit of interest. Because you could see the battery obviously leaked on it onto those bits there, or possibly, I say it must be that because I don't think the rubber would have gone that hard over the years, but even even so, throughout years rubber does go hard, doesn't it? So it could have been hardening up anyway, but the, the, uh, the leakage, the alkaline leakage definitely would have helped, uh, definitely wouldn't have helped. But uh, yeah, how good was that Mega Joy 2000 controller? That was the first thing I tried and it was like it was made to measure. So it just shows you when you have something faulty, if you've got the room in your house or your garage or an attic or something, throw it all into a box and keep it because then you might need those things again, whether it might be a spare resistor or a capacitor in there, or in this instance here, you've seen a membrane. Like I would never have dreamed that that would have in the future fixed the clock radio, but you can see that it fixed it absolutely fine. So if I set the alarm now, you can see how easy. Basically, that now feels, now that I'm doing it a bit more, it has loosened up completely and it is working perfectly. And to adjust the time, you can see it's working there. Sleep on, works fine. So, really enjoyed that one. If you did too, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more China Fix videos. Take care. Bye now.